paisanos! It's the Southwest Florida Gamers Super Show! With the Mario Brothers and Plumbing's a game We're not like the others who get all the fame If your sick is in trouble, you can call us on the double We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers Podcast listeners, this is Southwest Florida Gamers' first ever podcast, so you'll have to uh, bear with us as we kind of stumble through this. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of good memories, and uh, good times. So, <laughs> uh, let's start with some introductions, I guess. Um, well, my name's Matt, first of all. Um, one of the co-founders of Southwest Florida Gamers. Been pretty much a gamer my whole life. I'm a big Nintendo fanboy. Uh, that's what my collection consists of. I do everything from NES, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, GameCube. That's kind of what I am into collecting. I probably got close to a thousand pieces in my collection right now, you know, individual games. Uh, really into like collecting complete in box type games. That's what I try to hold my money out for. Um, above and beyond that, uh, I like, oh my god, I'm losing it! I gotta edit that part out. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I don't, what else should I say? I don't fucking know. What else do you into? Magic? Oh yeah, magic. I like playing magic, um. Pokemon? No, nah, not so much Pokemon. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm actually, I'm getting ready to sell my magic cards to invest in the Nintendo games. How's about that? Um, too many ums. God damn, I'm losing. You, you can edit it. You can edit it. Yeah. So, all right, let's pass it on to let's pass it on to the Dutchman over here. What's going on, everybody? It's Johnny V, aka the Flying Dutchman. I'm pretty much into everything and anything. Uh, I was a Sega Nazi most of my early life. Now I'm getting into uh, different things. I collect from. Uh, old PC games all the way up to, I guess you can say, GameCube, PS2. Everything is up for sale and everything is I want to buy. Uh, I'm hopefully getting a Turbo Graphics here, hopefully soon, for one of our favorite places, Level Up in Punta Gorda, name drop. Uh, my other interests are uh, Dungeons & Dragons, although I do not play the game uh, as far as role-playing. I'm also a big fan of Doctor Who and early British sci-fi. And uh, any type of uh, role-playing fantasy, literature, Victorian. I'm into all that. Um, Matt and I kind of met through Craigslist, and we are both co-founders of Southwest Florida Gamers, and that's how we met our other friends who will be soon talking. Yeah, most everybody that we've met has been through Craigslist. <laughs> I think, didn't, Orlando, didn't you and John meet through or Craigslist originally? Yeah, I met uh, John, and then you were, you were the only one that responded to my, uh, Forbidding ads, and we got to, we hooked up, and that's how it all started. Yeah. And how did we meet Justin? Uh, I think I came across you guys' sites on uh, Facebook. Oh yeah, yeah, you signed up on there. Yeah, you joined up. Turn your volume up, Justin. Turn what up? Volume. A volume. Not volume. Pump up the volume. <laughs> so go ahead, Justin. Introduce yourself. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Okay. I am uh, Justin. Uh, I go by Penguin Online. Uh, some of you may know me from the uh, Nintendo Age forums. Uh, I've been a prominent member around there since around 2007. Uh, I got into the video game collecting scene uh, right around the end of 2004, beginning of 2005, back before the boom started. Uh, I mainly dabble in uh, unlicensed NES games. Also, uh, right now I've been doing complete in box original Game Boy TurboGrafx-16, and uh, my kind of niche uh, specialty, I guess you could say, I collect uh, old Nintendo uh, test equipment, and I really like to look for uh, old press kits and uh, promotional-type uh, 
paperwork and information from old game companies. I'm a big uh, history buff, so I guess that's why I like learning about the history of the game companies, because it kind of crosses two of my interests together, as far as that's concerned. Yeah, on your YouTube page, you got all those old commercials uh, that are kind of interesting to watch. Yeah, I've, I've picked up some old VHS tapes, and I, I've got a few that I haven't released yet, but I have plans to do something with them in the future, hopefully, if I get the time. Very cool, very cool. Uh, Big O, go for it. Yeah, what's up, everybody? My name is Orlando. I'm also known as Orlando. <laughs> unlike unlike uh, my buddy, the Dutchman there, I am still a Sega Nazi. So... Pretty much anything Sega, Genesis, Dreamcast, Saturn. You guys know the drill. Uh, uh, into a lot of the more, uh, recent stuff too. Mainly Xbox 360, PS3, stuff like that. Uh, big into collector's edition. I mean, you name them. As far as for the 360 goes, I got a few. And looking forward to this, um, next few weeks coming up, uh, with the new system launching. So. Uh, yeah, basically that's pretty much it. That's all I got. What are, I mean, should we talk about like what we're all playing right now? Yeah. Yeah, sweet, man. Go. Cool. Sure. All right, Justin, what are you currently playing? Uh, recently I've been playing, uh, I've gotten back into Skyrim on the 360 a lot. Uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it eats up quite a bit of time, as a lot of you probably already know already. As far as retro stuff, uh, I've been trying to pick up Chrono Trigger again. I got about halfway through it a couple years ago, and I wanted to get back in and try and beat it this time. What do you guys think about like uh, buying those EverDrives or the the what it, the uh, power packs and just playing just playing games on that? I, I personally I use my power pack uh, for my my NES system mainly because I don't have to take my games out of their boxes then when I want to play them. It saves you know from damaging them and having to clean them too. Mm. Yeah, I go with uh, a little bit more darker uh, uh, setup. I got the original Xbox and just run emulators for that thing, and works pretty good. I I, I myself I, I don't have the power pack. I kind of want to play everything, you know, stone bones how it would be. Uh, but I can see how the power pack would like extremely help. Um. But as far as what I'm playing right now, I just uh, actually finished Fantasy Star 1 for the Sega Master System. And right now I am starting Ease, the Vanish Omens on the Sega Master System. Which, I tell you the truth, uh, Fantasy Star was really big and so was Ease. But I have to tell you, uh, between the both of them, I actually like Ease a little bit better because it's more story driven. How did you think Fantasy Star? What was? Fan- I mean, for its Fantasy Star, was for it... It... no Fantasy Star for its time. If I went back in time, that game would have blown me away. I mean, with 3D graphics going through dungeons and everything, uh, and the gra- the graphics, amazing. But the storyline, there really wasn't, and it really blows me away how uh, creative kids had a B back in that day to get through games. I mean, not getting off topic, but one of the first role-playing games I beat was the dreaded Deadly Towers. And everyone hates that game, but I mean, I literally got graph paper and mapped out each dungeon to figure out what was going, because at the time, I didn't, my parents were cheap asses, I did not have any Nintendo Power, Obviously, there was no internet back then, so you just had to go. I mean, it it literally you had to go by your own sense of what you saw. And I really give credit to people when you go back in those Nintendo Power uh, magazines, beating games, especially when Nintendo Power first came out, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I beat Metroid. Oh yeah, I beat this," because it's like, how in God's name did you do some of this stuff? I mean, a lot of trial and error, but anyways, back to back to what I was saying, uh, Fantasy Star, for its time, great game. If you want to play it now, I mean, out of 1 to 10, I give it like a 7. 
Ease is more of a game that actually has more kind of like a cutscene, more story driven. So if you want to pick up a good RPG that kind of has like a Zelda esque, you know, kind of click to it, I would pick Ease. Any hidden me- messages in the fantasy star game? Yeah, they asked if you like Sega games, and if you didn't, uh, the game would blow up. <laughs> that shit would blow up in my face. <laughs> That's crazy. No, I was pretty big into Fantasy Star Four. That game, I that game, I had a fun time with on the Sega. Uh, for me, um, in terms of like the power pack, I have one for the Super Nintendo, and I kind of had strict rules for myself. I was like, I'm only going to play. Uh, non-U.S. released games on there, or download like different types of um, uh, test programs that different companies had for it. You know, just unique type software. But after hearing what you said, Penguin, uh, that's not too bad of an idea, especially you know when you start protecting some of your boxes with these clear cases and all that kind of shit. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I like that. that's a good idea. I totally would do that. Well, I'm very ADD when I play, like, retro games. Like, I'll play games for five minutes, and I'll jump in every one for five or ten minutes. Justin, you're getting... The the volume's getting all quiet again. Is it? Yeah. I guess I just have to talk more into the mic like this. Yeah, there you go. That's good, right there. Okay. Well, what were you saying now? Oh, but as I was saying, uh, I'm very ADD when it comes to playing uh, old retro games like that, especially on the NES. Like, I like to play a game for five, ten minutes and then switch to something else. So do you, yeah. like, I mean, do you get into, like, the RPGs and stuff then? or are that, is that Yeah, too RPGs are different. I'm talking more like little, like, you know, side-scrolling and shooter-type games. Half those games, that's all the more that anyone could play in. Yeah, like, exactly. A little bit of a library. <laughs> I mean, most of, you know, retro libraries of any system just suck ass to play. Yeah. yeah, they're hard as shit, too. <laughs> Big time hard as shit. Well, I mean, to tell you the truth, there's a lot of good games out there, and if you're sitting looking at your collection, and you got, like I do, 900 plus, and you're looking at them, you're like, what should I play today? You know what's good and what's not, but you start playing one game, whether it be RPG or a platformer or a shooter, there is good games, but you start playing them, and you're like, Oh, that was fun. Let's try this. Oh, that was fun. Let's try this. So, yeah, the ADD does kick in quite a bit. (laughs) Good old sound effects. Soundboard timing. Um, Nice. So, let's segue here to our main topic. You have to say what you you play. Oh, uh, currently, right now. uh, God, this is going to require so much goddamn editing. Um... Uh, I, honestly, the last game I played was on the Power Pack, and uh, I was listening to another podcast, and they were talking about the Firemen for Super Nintendo. Awesome! Uh, and it it was never released, I don't believe, outside of Japan, and it's you know it's actually a pretty fun game. You know, there was a fan English translated version that you can get offline, and um, it, you, you you play as these two firefighters, you only control one, and you go through, and you you go through this, basically the storyline is you, you have to go into this huge corporation that's caught on fire on Christmas Day, and you need to try to, you know, put out the fire, and you just walk through all the different rooms, all the different floors with your fire hose that has somehow unlimited water attached to it, and you're just hosing flames left and right, and there's boss battles and enemies, and for all of it being of uh, just about putting out fires, it's it's pretty creative and, and kind of addictive, actually. Very good game. Good times, great oldies. Um, but talking about kind of like a main topic for the evening, uh, we were thinking, what's everyone's opinions on? Hey, you dick! I'm playing GTA Five, by the way. Right now. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, that's what I'm playing. That's my playing section. I'm playing GTA 5. And? It fucking kicks ass. Fuck. Dude, that fucking game. I don't know what, what the hell these people are thinking. It's just... It's too much. <laughs> my brother... 
my brother is actually playing right now uh, The Last of Us. Okay. Wait. That's, it, yeah, that's the one with Joel and Ellie. Yeah, okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's kind of... I didn't know it was a zombie-esque game, but from what I can see... Pretty cool. Uh, the graphics on it's just well, the, the com- yeah, not the combat, but the, the story line is just it's up there. Yeah, top notch. Very, yeah. If that's the game I'm thinking of, I thought it got like bad reviews it, and shit. It did. It it no, got no. Really, got bad you're, reviews. You're thinking about Beyond the la- the latest one from that came from Sony. What, what? What's the? What, why are they getting bad reviews though? What is that based on? Because the guy that makes those type of games, like Beyond and Heavy Rain and Indigo Prophecy, uh, it's the same shit over and over, basically. So people are pretty much getting tired of it. Same shit, different game. Mm-hmm. God damn it! I still want to play Dragon Crown. Cause it's that's got the one, gra- it's that's got, the one with the boobs, right? Yeah, gran- Grande Tetas. Yeah. You know? Poquito Pingas. Poquito Pingas. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that an Atlas game? Yes, it is. Oh, oh, uh, Dragon's Crown is Atlas? Yes. Get out. Well, Atlas <laughs> never made a bad game. I don't think. Knights in the Nightmare was kind of weird. Did you, uh, Penguin, did you ever play Knights in the Nightmare on the DS? Never even heard of it. Really? Anybody here in Knights in the Nightmare? Nope. No. That, it's an <laughs> Atlas game, very story driven, and you kind of take the role of these different knights that they all have their individual move patterns, almost like on a chessboard. And you, I can't remember too much about it. I played through it, um, but you basically you gotta somehow defeat your enemies with these different attack patterns that each knight has on this. The board is very, like, you're on a game board each time almost. It's very structured. It was interesting, but it just got way too repetitive towards the end. Huh. That's all I have to say about that. So what does everyone think about what games they would like to see uh, revamped on new systems? Shenmue. Yeah, well, every, yeah... Yeah, another one. That's coming out. That's coming out on PC. Didn't that get kickstarted? Uh, I don't think so. No. Yeah, that everyone's been begging for that for a long. That's the time. genie game, right? No. no. What what game no. did you say? Oh Orlando? no no no! He's thinking no Orlando. He's thinking of that uh Game Boy game. Uh, oh. Penguin, what's it called? Shen. Shenmue. Shante. Sh- Shante? Oh, Shantae. Shantae. yeah, the Atlas. Yeah, right. Shantae. No, Shantae, Sh- Shenmue is like, you're this Asian guy, it's like, uh... It's the best game on the Dreamcast, come on. I, man. No, 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 I haven't played it, you you explain it, because I forget, I, I haven't played is it. Is that the one where it had was supposed to have, like, nine installations? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, I know one. what game you're talking about. Yep, that's it right there. But they only, they ended after, like, two? Yeah, two was the last one. On the original Xbox. And after that, we got nothing. What about so you? That's, that's one I'd like to see a remake. You know, not a remake, but at least continuation of it. And there's new consoles. That and Panzer. Well, Panzer Dragoon is being made. It's gonna call, it's gonna be called Crimson Dragons coming out with the new console now, the new Xbox now. Ooh, really? I didn't know that. Well, yeah, it's called, they, they renamed it. First, it was a Kinect game, and they figured out that Kinect was bullshit. So they said they added control uh, functionality to it, and they called the Crimson Dragon. It's coming out with the Xbox One. Is it going to be an on-rail shooter like the first two games, or more of an RPG like uh, Panzer Saga? It's going to be an on-rail, and it's going to be downloadable, I believe. Hmm, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because I, I just actually got a couple games for the PS2 and it was like Drakengard and something else and they were total, uh, Panzer Dragoon clones, mm. which I was actually really surprised. Um, I, I think I heard Drakengard 3 being, uh, put out sometime this, 
by the end of this year or next year? Yeah, no, I, I, I heard Drakengard, the one I had, got good reviews. I popped it in, and I just saw uh, Panzer, but um, I, I myself would like to see some more uh, dungeon crawlers pop up again. I've always been a big fan of Orlando, you probably should know this with Sega CD, but the Eye of the Beholder game. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I would like to see a little bit more of those. Uh, I played them on PC. The first two were great. The third one was kind of lackluster. Um, supposedly, the third one was ported. I'm trying to talk to Vampire Mike from a Sega CD universe if this actually is true, because I can't find it anywhere on eBay. But um, I would like to see something more like that, you know, like Wizard Drill or uh, Dungeon Master, or something, something like that, you know, old school on the uh, on these uh, these Neo consoles. I know they do have a couple homebrews kicking around, and uh, they look pretty cool. But uh, it'd be interesting to see what they can do with, you know, doing a modern twist on these uh, retro dungeon crawlers. Yeah, that would be fun. What about you, uh, Justin or Matt? What do you guys want to get to see, uh, I don't know, something remade or something? I'm actually looking at my collection of games right now to see which what answer I would like to choose the best. I'm thinking, I know that there was like a Kickstarter for a new uh, Shadowrun that I think got start funded uh, for the uh, PC. Yeah. Uh, uh, that that one that like actually came out I think. Yeah, yeah, but I would like I mean on Kickstarter and Indiegogo I see all these you know projects for games to be recreated and just they put them on PCs like make this shit for consoles. That's what we grew you know. Uh, that's what we first played them on like put them back on consoles even if it's on newer end systems. Like, put it back there where we can enjoy it in the same way that we did originally. Um, but, you know, Shadowrun, a new a, a console version of that, um, you know. Especially with the code coming out just recently. Yeah, all these code. There's the Shadowrun code, the pipe, the, uh, what was it? The, the Sim City codes that have just been being discovered recently. That's just pretty badass. Um, what about you, Penguin? Uh, I've, I've got a couple games in mind. There was um, one I used to play quite a bit in the Saturn called Crusader No Remorse. Oh, this is yeah! The, yeah, a very violent shooting game, and I, I think a new, you know, downloadable, like, XBLA game, version of that would be really good nowadays. Yeah. And uh, I know uh, Parasite Eve is one of my favorite games on the PlayStation. I would love to see a new Parasite Eve game. Yep. Yeah! Yes, sir. What's that mermaid game you're all about, oh. Penguin? Oh, King Neptune. <laughs> it's not really a mermaid game. <laughs> did, did any of you guys ever play the D games, the D series? Oh, no, no, no. I've always wanted to. I need to get that for my Dreamcast or well, Saturn. Well, they're coming out with D4 for the Xbox One as well. Was it good? Was it good? I, I've only played, well, I have D2 on the Dreamcast, and I don't know where they get D4 from, because I don't, I don't remember D3 unless it came out on an obscure system. I don't know about, but. In uh, Japan. Did you ever yeah, see 3D? Huh? Nothing, that was a messed up joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> I thought that was Failed attempt at a joke. <laughs> no, but yeah, I've always heard uh, to try out D as far as the survival horror. Um, but isn't it more like a... It's not like a free-roaming game. It's more like a, a mist kind of point-and-click thing, figure out puzzles, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think the, the new one has similar um, uh, point-and-click... Uh, I saw on the screenshots. I saw a little hand uh, hovering over the guy, but it's a you know it's a, it looks pretty damn good. It's got a, kind of like a, that uh, graphic novel look to it. Was the hand jacking him off? 
Uh, he was checking his eye off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, n- n- one more thing, I was—I th- I just was thinking about Saturn, but uh, Dragon Force, expensive game. I don't have it, but I played a rip version of it. But that would have been another awesome game, very cool fantasy strategy game that could be uh, ported as well. There's a there's a few Saturn titles on the on the Xbox Live Arcade. I don't know if you guys have played the. There's, they got the Guardian Heroes, uh, Radiant Silver Gun. Now they got a few things in there, and uh, kind of like the that Guardian Heroes and Radiant Silver Gun being some of the most expensive Saturn titles. Yeah, I know Radiant Silver Gun. That was you could get an imported version of it, but those are always like two, three hundred bucks for those. Yeah, yeah. But that's on there, you know. That's that's an option for somebody, you know. Like us, and look, I can't afford a three hundred dollar game, but so I just—that's a nice ten, fifteen dollar download there that to experience that a great game. So, you know, talking about all these new systems and everything, what's your guys' opinions on the new Xbox One with all the shit that's going on with that? Day one. You're picking it up on day one. Day one, that's a no fucking brainer. You're gonna let them record you like sitting around in your underwear? I'm gonna uh, flick uh, what's his name off? Uh, whoever's sitting on the chair, the NSA, whoever the hell's looking. <laughs> Bill, Bill Gates is gonna be watching. Yeah, that's fine. He's he he's gonna give all of all of us malaria or something with his craziness. <laughs> so, well, Justin, you don't play any new stuff, do you? Yeah, I've got a 360. That's my new system that I play, but I'm actually going to be getting a PS4 this next generation. You got to get a Wii U. Oh, no. no don't do that. <laughs> well, I want to get a Wii U, but I'm waiting for like a cheaper bundle, so, cause I want yeah, like, to play the new Zelda and the new Mario game on there. Yeah. The I th- see it at, at 150. I think it's a great you just Go that. on Craigslist and buy it from one of them fucking people that are always trying to push their used Wii U's off. I, I, I did. A special, like, either green or red version. Oh, yeah. I can there's color a, it green or red for you. Well, you know, there's a Zelda version, right? I mean, just the the pad is Zelda. Yeah, uh, the got, Wind Waker HD. Oh, yeah. I don't really like Wind Waker, so... It, it, it's kind of funny because I'm not really into Neo consoles, but right when uh, Justin was talking about Skyrim... When I played the old school Xbox, I was ex- I was hooked, absolutely hooked on Morrowind. And when uh, the Xbox 360 came out with um oh shit What's Oblivion that? Oblivion, I was like my I was telling my brother I'm like dude please get it so I can play it get that so I can play it. And I think the only reason I'd actually get the Xbox. Is to play the old the the uh the Morrowind uh series uh but from what my brother tells me the PS is the way to go and he's been playing some pretty I guess cool games you know, from there so it's let me tell you right now it's not the way to go not this uh, past generation uh especially Skyrim was very they had a lot of problems on the PS3. So, you know, Xbox, uh, this generation was like the lead platform. So I, you know, if you go, if you are going to get it, I suggest you get it on that. It works better on that anyway. So I don't know. What are your, what's your experience with it, Justin, uh, as far as the uh, Skyrim goes? Uh, my, my 360 has been pretty good. You know, I haven't had too many glitches on it. I've had a couple times where like I got stuck in a mountain or something, but. And I've had it freeze maybe three or four times, but overall it hasn't been that bad. Yeah. The PS3 version, is, I heard, it just locks up and locks up, and they've been having problems. That's why I'm mentioning, you know, if you're going to get it, you can find an Xbox right now for 100 bucks anyway, so. How does this shit get released with, like, so many problems to begin with? Laziness. And because it's such a huge game, it's it's hard to, you know, search for bugs and everything on there. Deadlines. That's, yeah, and then that's why they come out with all the patches later on. Well, it's it's funny, too, speaking of uh, what I call Neo consoles. 
I guess the games nowadays are getting uh, as hard as old NES games as far as quick death, cheat deaths, and everything else. My brother was playing a game, I guess, is infamous in the uh, the new PlayStation community called uh, Demon Souls or... Oh, now, Demon Souls. I you guess hate it's yourself, like, fuck it, you're dead every two yeah. seconds. If you hate yourself, play that game. Yeah, and it looks yeah. cool. It looks really cool. I watch him play it, but then he gets like stomped every three seconds. It's like it's the point where you're you're getting you're going back to the old school days of throwing your Nintendo controller yes. through the TV. Have, it, have any of you guys tried Dark Souls? It's like I, the sequel I, to Demon Souls. No, I, I, yes, well, I haven't played it, but I watched my brother play it, and it's the same kind of scenario. And yeah, it's like it's, it's that one's even worse. If you want to blow your brains out, dude, play Dark Souls. <laughs> I mean, it's a gorgeous game and everything, and I love that shit. But I'm watching him play it, and he's like, "Fuck it." But then he goes to these other games that it's almost like. You can go through the whole game without dying. It's like, I mean, I want to get my money's worth, you know, but it's like they haven't found, like, a common ground in between uh, difficulty and reward. It's, you know, it's a situation where it's either too, too hard or too, too easy, and there you go. Can you change the difficulty on those games, or is it just... I don't even know. This is all. I'm like a grand. No. I'm like an old man talking about this no. stuff. I don't know. Drink your balls, get in your way of playing the game. I mean, I I wipe the system with my balls to try to look this, you know, screen better, but that's about it. But I mean, I I dig those games. I mean, I don't. But it, for me, it's like I don't even know how you guys go from playing Sega Master System, Nintendo, and then all of a sudden picking up your Xbox or PS3 and going. Yay! Okay, I'm I'm now down. Da- I'm now done with futuristic 2020 game. To let's play this pong game as I I could compare it to. I don't know how you guys do that. It's not that hard, really. I mean, the old games for me they're more almost nostalgic, and you know I like to play a little bit of both. I'll switch back and forth from time to time. And but yeah. I mean, but seriously, me- it's like. You, you, with the new games, I mean, let's just, uh, for an example, Skyrim, let's compare that to like a Dragon Warrior. How can you pick, I mean, it's like, I don't even know how to explain it, because I know me, myself, if all of a sudden I started playing Skyrim, and then go back to Dragon Warrior, I'd be like, you know, F this noise, I want to play. That's one reason I'm almost scared to upgrade. No, well, it, it's it's not that bad, really. I mean, uh, you always go back to what you grew up with, and and as long as you understand, like, I'm pretty sure all of us here understand the old system, so that's why it, it makes it easier. You know what I mean? That to go back and play the, those uh, twenty year old games because you already know what's you know what to expect. Like- so. My big problem with playing the new games, I, I mean, they're fun and I can enjoy them and everything, but I'm so fucking OCD about, like, any game that I start. If I, I, I can't play any other game until that's completed, and I have to, like, max that game out. I have to get all the best, you know, weapons, equipment, items, get all the little trinkets and everything. And if I don't do that, I get so frustrated, I just stop playing altogether. Like, I can't... I mean, there's just no way with these new games and all their achievements and all that kind of shit. It just drives me up the wall. I can't I can't do it. Yeah, the achievements will drive you nuts if you if you, if you follow that. That really uh, make you nuts, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, uh, I actually have to give Matt credit because for the longest time... I actually had uh, the ADD as far as finishing games. I'd put something in for two seconds. My brother had the same problem, too. he plays play stuff for four hours, put another game, play that for four hours. And then finally, it's like, you know, you have this X amount of, of games you're looking at, and you haven't finished anything. It's like, for the love of Christ, finish a game, go to another one. 
finish a game, go to another one. It's like, it sucks because you want to enjoy everything, but it's almost better to actually beat the game, put it to the side, let's try something new. Because once you're jumping around and stuff, because I mean, I, I literally initially was like playing NES, a Super Nintendo, to Sega, and I remember going and, and playing, uh, I, I went to go put in Final Fantasy uh, 2 for Super Nintendo, and I was like, where am I? What am I supposed to do now? And then you get lost. You don't know where the F you're supposed to go. So it's a scenario where it's, I, I almost think it's just best to finish a game and just go to the next one. And that's one, one other game you have underneath your belt. Good point, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, it, they just make it so easy nowadays. You know, a, a game comes out today, and then two weeks later, it's twenty bucks. You know, they just make it easy. That's why you end up with all these fucking games, and you know, not really don't know what the hell to play. But it's not like back in the day. We got, I, I don't know. I, I remember. I think I remember seeing games as much as eighty bucks. Oh back shit! Then. I get like and three games at Christmas, and that shit would have to last me until my birthday, like half a year away. Dude, three I... games? Are you crazy? We were lucky. I got Bubble Bubble. That's all I played for a whole year. <laughs> yeah, I had Pac Man. I used to make different games out of that. I used to pretend Pac Man was the A Team van, and you're doing. You had to. You had to be creative with your video games back in the day. <laughs> That's when kids had imagination. Serious. You really did. You had to look at a game and put a different twist on it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember back in the day, you know, well, this is kind of a side, but I'll, I'll go into this little tangent afterwards about this. But I remember back in the day, I'd, I'd go with my parents to the video store and they'd, you know, they'd let me pick out a game to play over the weekend. You know, that was the one game I got to play, you know, so that I sat there and played it. Whether I liked it or not, you know. I just went by how the cover art looked when I was, you know, reading the games. Like, oh, this game looks cool. I'm going to get this. Dragon Dude, Power. <laughs> that happened to me with, uh, you guys remember Iron Sword? They had Fabio on the freaking Oh, cover. Iron Sword. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wizards and Warriors. Yeah. Dude, uh, that game is okay. But back then, I mean, for a kid to just have that to play, that sucked. And I had that. That was the only game I had, again, for the whole year, because that's all, you know. No! No, I I mean, I'm a little older than you guys, not by much, but, I mean, when I, I mean, I started off with the 5200, and I thought I had, my buddies had the 2600, but I had the 5200, so I had arcade graphics, but unfortunately, the library sucked. So I had to deal with my Pac-Man, uh, my, J I, which I turned into an A-team <laughs> game, my joust and all that stuff. But e even when I got younger, you're right. You know, you, when I finally got my Nintendo, you, you got a game and that's the game you had to deal with, which was actually kind of good at the time because you actually were forced to play it until you beat it or had to return it. Yeah. Well, there any way in hell you could beat a game like Deadly Towers today, you know, with so many different games. Oh, at hell your no. Disposal, no, no, the no. Time to drop, especially with like GameFacts.com and all that shit, you know, all the online help. I remember it was, I was in middle school. It was during summer vacation in Michigan. I was actually upstairs in my parents' summer home on a, a small black and white TV playing Deadly Towers. All day, all night with graph paper, mapping out dungeons, which you really didn't need to map out. You just had to get the F out of there and figuring out the game. And when I finally beat that, I mean, the accomplishment you feel as a kid is just like, it was almost like learning how to make an atomic bomb or learning a new element. You thought you were a god, you know, and you, you were so happy with yourself about that. It was just... It was amazing, you know? So let me get this straight, Gramps. Instead of uh, going to the milkshake <laughs> shop and uh, trying to pick up chicks during the summer, you're at home in your parents' bedroom playing. Dude, this is when I was in middle school in, in the middle of Hillbilly Town. 
I was lucky to find a girl with two teeth back then. <laughs> no, but seriously, it really does show how spoiled uh kids are now as compared to what we had when we were kids with money or not. It just is a situation of it wasn't this mass media and information everywhere, you know? It's like nowadays I don't want to go to a walkthrough to find my uh, way out of a stuff, but sometimes, you know, you get forced to. You're like, well, it's, too e it's too easy now. You know what? I mean, it sucks. And I, I, I mean, I don't like to do that, but sometimes I'm forced to. If I'm like, you know, it's like one of those things. Uh, when I started playing Fantasy Star, I was literally, let's put it this way, like level 21 is your highest level. Well, I'm only like in part one of the game. And I'm already at level 12, and I know, don't know where the fuck I'm going. Okay, it's time to get a map and try to figure out. Some of that, I mean, back in the day, some of that shit was just almost so cryptic and so impossible that even drawing maps or anything by yourself, there's like almost no way without like a, a subscription to Nintendo Power or something that anyone could ever figure out. No! How it, to solve any of those puzzles. Like, did yeah, any, did it, any of you guys get the get that Zelda uh, map when it came out back in the day? The first Zelda? No. Whoever had that was a god. Yeah. Back then. Yep. Because it showed you all the little secret staircases and the shops and where to put the bombs and this. And man, that, that was that was fun. Yeah, you really... Yeah, having that stuff really did make you a god. It was just like... Yeah. Oh, I know, I know where everything is. Bing, 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 bang, boom. Done. It kind of reflects on, you know, how society as gaming is today. Whereas, you know, it's the digital age. Everything, everyone can get everything almost instantly. And I think that's even, you know, changed a lot of us that grew up, you know, having to figure things out the hard way as far as video games are concerned. A lot of us don't have the patience anymore to go back and play older games sometimes. You know, we get stuck and it, you know, it was more yeah. a waste of our time to have to go through and try to figure this out on our own. Yeah, yeah, that's why I don't mind the, uh, I don't mind the hand holding in the newer games now because, like you said, uh, as we get older, the, the less time we have, the less patience. So. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's not even yeah. about a lack of patience. It's like we got jobs, we got you yeah, know, whatever other responsibilities and shit. We don't, we we can't spend. We got time for that. Yeah, nobody ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, yeah. Nobody's so, got time to spend like hours every afternoon trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah. So gaming. I don't adults. mind the hand holding in the new games, you know, the linear, the linear past and stuff like that, you know. No, I, I mean, even looking back at the old games, uh, even if they give you a hint, it'd be so cryptic. It'd be like a situation like this. Oh, uh, yes, sir, I've lost my necklace. Can you find it? And you're like, yeah, sure, dude, no problem. Where the F is it? You can go all over around the world map. You go to GameFAQs, and they're like, oh, yeah, look at the left lake on the bottom right corner. You'll find it. How in <laughs> God's name are you supposed to know to go there unless you checked every nook and cranny all over Africa to find this stupid thing? And you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know. You would just figure, well, is it in this in this tunnel? Did, did you talk to everybody twice in the tunnel? It doesn't matter. No. If you talk to them twice, they tell you different stuff. No. That's... It doesn't. No. No. <laughs> there's no talking twice. It is just, they give you this real cryptic, and I mean cryptic. It's like, yeah, I lost my stuff. You find it. It's like someone saying in America, I lost my penny in one of the states. Go find it. Well, what state? Have fun. I, I think what they were getting at is back in the day when they did something like that, they meant for you to find it as you're going along and playing the game. You would run into it eventually, is I think their philosophy behind that. <laughs> I guess. The only reason I even bring this up is like I'm paying, playing Ease right now, and I, I could, they, the guy lost his ring. And the only way to get his ring is to find this lost golden statue, which no one knows where it is. And, I, I mean, I looked everywhere. I figured it was in caves. I, I got my ass kicked. I figured it was in a town. They didn't know. Make a long story short, it was 
like on the bottom end of the map, like on the corner of a lake that you literally would have to press yourself into to find it. Like I literally even even when they told me where it was, I had to like go around the lake once, couldn't find it, go around the lake another time. And then finally I press in the, the right part and it's like, oh, you found something shiny. Oh, it's the golden statue. And it's like, oh my God. Well, I think like some developers really got that uh, early game development theory down good. And some just, you know, left it so completely difficult for whatever reasons. But like, take for instance, you know, like Metroid back in the day had a huge map, you know, with no directions on where to go. I mean, that could be totally confusing to somebody, but it was laid out in a in a way that was, like, possible enough for people to understand. But then you got shit like uh, the angry video game nerd made famous the one scene of uh, Castlevania 2 where you gotta, you know, crouch up against the wall with a certain item and wait for the tornado to come and pick you up. Like, how the hell are you supposed to figure out something like that? Anybody? Bueller. Trial and error. Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> now, Metroid, I beat. And I remember I actually beat it a second time, and all of a sudden I saw her take her clothes off, and I was freaking out. You got a boner! I was like, <laughs> Metroid's a woman? I thought it was a glitch. I literally beat it back in the day, didn't know what the hell was going on, and I'm like, why is Metroid a girl? And there you go. So you beat it. Back in the day. So no, cool. I mean, I even put, I used to, I beat Castlevania once, and you're able to actually go through it again, and the treasures turn into different items. So I figured it could possibly turn into a different game, which it didn't, but that was the one thing that was cool about those games. You always, they did it to make you think that keep going, keep going, keep going, you might find something new. It's just like back in the original Mario Brothers. Beat the whole thing one time, and then all the Koopas turned into the Beetle Bills. You know, those Beetles. Do they really? <laughs> I remember that. And now for John's Thought of the Day. You know, so I've been looking for some good Game Boy Advance games as of late, and all I see is these Mega Man Battle Networks. What's the deal with these Mega Man Battle Networks, you might ask? The whole thing about that thing is, uh, they have like duplicates and duplicates and thousands and thousands of those, and I have no idea why people like this game. I think it's shit. Uh, I love all the other Mega Man games, but what about this one? It's just total crap. Uh, as the evil resellers would do, look for the uh, better ones, but I just can't find any joy in any of these. So as far as Mega Man Battle Network, they all fucking suck, and they should all be taken off the shelf. Thanks for listening. Bye. So what what what's our time here? We've been recording for fifteen minutes now, guys. Can you Ooh, believe that? I got a I got a cool topic really quick. Do you guys remember when you guys were a kid? Do you guys remember like any video game folklore? Like some kid told you something like, Oh, if you jumped in in a certain place on Mario, this would happen, or if you did this, this would happen. It was all BS, but it, well, everyone believed it. I've got I've got a good one here. Back in the day, one of my friends told me that you could jump through the wall in level two of Super Mario Brothers, and he he had d done it one time, and he don't know how he even did it, but it turns out, as some of you probably know, that's the the glitch that you can do to get to the negative world in Super yeah. Mario. Oh, I I've tried that, and I cannot get it to work. Uh.
Oh, I've got I've got a negative world before. Yeah, it's you. You have to center it just right. Man. Yeah, don't you have to like be in a ducking position and then jump off the pipe into the wall backwards? Yep. Some baloney like that. Uh, Orlando, do you have any old uh retro folklore stories? Uh, the only one that comes to mind is uh, uh, Mario as well. Um, you know, I, I I forget what world is it, but. Uh, it's actually not uh, not a lie. You could do it, but remember how you could just jump on the duck and get like a million lives. Yeah, just keep that's on a true jumping. Story. No, no, that's what you're saying. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. You could that's that can be done, but that's about the only stuff I got as far as that. This this stuff makes me think of like the new age creepy pasta stories you hear oh, about, God. like the Pokemon uh, horror stories of like. Uh, the guy in the game being haunted, uh, mine, Minecraft and, uh, Majora's Mask or whatever. Yeah, creepypasta is always fun. Um, the one thing I heard about back in the day, this is even going before Nintendo, is that a buddy of mine actually told me there's an ending to Pitfall where if you get to a certain part, a helicopter, this is Pitfall 1, a helicopter will come down and take Pitfall Harry out of the jungle. And he had, he must have had a couple other friends in on it too, because everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah, I got that far too. And this brown helicopter, and it was so funny because I actually looked this up a couple months ago, and someone did a doctored photo of a helicopter coming, a pixelated helicopter coming and getting Pitfall Harry out of the jungle, which blew my mind. The one old age uh, story that I remember, I think, was it Mortal Kombat 2 where you could fight Reptile? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a whole bunch of stuff about yeah, that. But yeah, but I remember everybody and their mom had stories about how you could play as Reptile, but... As we all know, that shit never happened. No, I guess... I think, right? No, I... No. Part two, you could... Uh, reptile was in part two. Do you mean Noob Zalet? Noob or... What, 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 what was the game where you could, like, fight Reptile, like, in the pit? Was that in... Was that in Mortal Kombat 1? No. It probably must have been. It must have been. But yes, I know what you're yes. talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it had to be one because he was playable in two. Yeah, because you, you, you had to do something uh, at a certain time or whatever, and you fall off a bridge or something. Oh, Jesus. I hope I just didn't lose all my street cred as a gamer. No, 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 it's true. I know what you're talking about. No, you it had, is You true. had to yeah, do you're something right. weird. I mean, there's so there's so many different, you know... Uh, oh, it, let's put it this way. It's like, uh, even going farther back, like you know... I'll bring Atari back up again. Endings to Pac-Man. Endings to Mr. Dew's Castle. Where you, I mean, there is a... I mean, I remember my father, God rest his soul, he was an avid Pac-Man fan that he got so far, he actually got to the uh, kill zones, the uh, glitch, where, when the whole game glitches out, where you can actually not go any far. I mean, I guess you could... But the whole game just goes a batshit psycho, and uh, I think they're called kill zones. I can't think of the name of it right now. But uh, there's so many different stories. It, the, uh, n not to get off topic, but my one buddy, right when Return of the Jedi came out, he actually, this is a true story, he told me that there will be a new Star Wars, but it will be as them as kids. And I, I laughed at him. I wish I remember the dude's name, how he knew this. I don't know. And I always thought it would be after the Star Wars was done, would be afterwards. But he said, he's like, no, nope, it's going to be with the kid, as them as kids. And I said, oh, you're full of shit. I don't know where this guy is. I think he got shot after he told me. <laughs> the Illuminati came after the him. The Illuminati did it. He was in with George Lucas. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, we've been going for about 55 minutes, you guys. It's 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 pretty good for a, a first-time uh, podcast. Yeah, I think so. <sighs> yeah. I, I actually have another combat, or uh, not combat, topic, if we want to talk about this really quick. Go! Yeah. 
But um, I'm sure you guys have seen that uh, Blockbuster officially announced that they were going to be closing yes. the last 300 retail outlets in uh, by January 2014. And I thought maybe we could share some of our like you know best memories from video game store or video stores back in the day. Well, I got uh, I got something to add to that uh, news. They, uh, I think uh, for some reason people were pre-ordering the new systems from them, and somehow did you hear about this? Are, are people getting stuck with that, or are they gonna uh, get them the system? Or did you hear about that? No, I didn't. Pe- yeah. So people have pre-ordered the new systems from Blockbuster, and now yeah, they're so- stuck with losing their money. Yeah, for some dumb reason, people went and pre-ordered there. You gotta call Gloria Albright on their ass. <laughs> got I'll call uh, R. Sharpton and Jesse Jackson. I haven't been <laughs> up and down. Fucking <laughs> blockbuster. You know. Uh, let's think. Back in the day, I uh, my parents are divorced, and every other weekend I spent with my dad. And what we'd always do is drive up. Saturday morning, up to the neighboring town, and we would go hit up a Blockbuster and, and rent some games. Um, and even though it's... My most fondest memory of, like, a rental place isn't Blockbuster, it's Hollywood Pizza. You guys familiar with Hollywood Pizza at all? Uh, well, Hollywood Video, maybe? Hollywood Video, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were around for a few years down here. yeah. I mean, I would go there, like, every weekend and, you know, whatever game they had, you know, rent that shit up on the weekends. And that was, I would even rent, like, a Super Nintendo system from them at the time. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, carry it home. I'd walk home with the case in one hand and, like, a couple games in the other hand. But rental rental stores back in the day, it used to be so badass to just, you know, rent a, 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 a... a bunch of brand new games that you've never played before and just experience that for the whole weekend with your buddies. Like, I mean, that was, it was just like a new adventure every fucking weekend. Yeah. Um, well, I grew up in, um, uh, back in New York. Uh, they, we had a bunch of like mom and pop store, not mainly like Blockbuster was, that wasn't even, that was an afterthought. That was brought in. Well, where I, the area I lived in, that was brought in like in the late uh, 90s. I want to say uh, uh, N64 era PS1, you know, mid 90s, I want to say. That's when we got those in, but mostly it was mom and pop uh, rental shops. And I remember that's why the first time I saw uh, Scarface it was in one of those shops. Did it have the the back room with the curtains closed and all the porno in the back? Of course. <laughs> that was the best. What about you, Penguin? Well, I used to be here in Fort Myers back in the day. Uh, one of my best memories is I remember right around the time when the Virtual Boy came out. Off 41? Remember, yeah, yeah, right off 41 there. And I remember going in there, and they had a Virtual Boy kiosk set up, and I played it, and I was like, oh, God, why would people play this? It hurts your eyes so bad. And then I went and ended up renting one the next weekend to check it out for longer. <laughs> but um, back when I was a kid, too, um, one of my uh, dad's cousins actually owned a, a video store up in Milwaukee. And uh, every Christmas and birthday, he's, he'd always send me a new NES game every year. So that was always pretty cool, too. Oh, yeah. That's one way uh, for collectors out there right now. If you are able to find any, uh, you know, still rental businesses that are in in business, like keep an eye on them. You know, if they're ready to close out, that is a good good place to stock up on some possible old retro games. Don't give away our secrets. <laughs> When I was younger, they used to have, uh, I guess this is before your guys' time, but they used to have, a, like in uh, early 90s, uh, they used to have a van in Naples that would, uh, you call them up, and they would come to your place, and he would open it up like an ice cream truck, and he would show you what he had. And that was the first time we actually rented uh, Zelda Two: Adventure of Link, but um, to talk about 
later on, uh, what Justin's talking about with Blockbuster, I think it was Blockbuster or Hollywood Video, I can't remember it, but it was in Fort Myers, off 41, uh, if you're going south on the right-hand side, they used to sell a lot of their games as well. And I Prime used Time Video. What was that? Pr- Primetime Video. Oh, Primetime, yes, yes, thank you, I yes. Them. I used to go there religiously, religiously, uh, probably late 90s, early 2000s, and get Sega games. They used to sell everything. They used to sell everything. And I'm kicking myself that, because back, back at that time, I was just into Sega. And I would just pick up uh, Genghis Khan and all these RPGs. And um, it was amazing. I love the place. I, it, I think it's a, um, a party, uh, what's the hell is it called now? Party World? or what, What's the place they call it where they, you get all your costumes at? Party... Like a Halloween Party City. City. Party City or whatever it's called. They turn it into that now. And uh, I used to get so many games from them at a good price. And right before uh, them and EB went out of business, oh, man, I stocked up. I got a whole bunch of Sega CD games. I'm kicking myself in this day because I remember they had a, a, a Sega CD game called Snatcher. And Gosh. I, I, I remember seeing it in the bin for like pennies on the dollar, and I'm like, eh, I'll get Lunar instead. And I, I I'm killing myself. I, I never played the game yet. And one of my, one of my, bah, 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 definitely, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's how I feel about that one. Derp. Yeah, derp. Derp. So, uh, I think, well, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think this is a good place to end our first, first ever podcast. Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, anyone that is listening to this, I hope you enjoyed our first podcast ever. Again, my name is Matt. This is John. Next. Penguin. And Orlando. <laughs> Orlando. And we are all members of Southwest Florida Gamers, SWFL Gamers. You can find us at Facebook.com slash SWFL Gamers. Do the Mario swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step and then again. Let's do the Mario all together now. You got it! It's the Mario! Do the Mario! Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go! Do the Mario! Take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now!